in, everybody, to episode number three. Wow, we are already on episode number three of the New York Her podcast. I am your host, Olivia Landis. As usual, very excited to have all of you guys in and listening. Appreciate the support. Please make sure you guys listen on whichever platform you are able to hear your podcasts. We will also always have our videos up. But again, thank you guys. We are already into episode number three. And this week, very special guest. This is an individual who I have actually followed on social media for many years now. She is a growing talent with ESPN, the wonderful Mina Kimes. Mina, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Mina, you have such an interesting path to sports broadcast. You started out as a business journalist working for uh, both Fortune and Bloomberg News. I'm curious, how did you see the evolution of your career into sports broadcast by first starting out on the business side of things? Uh, Well, the real answer is I didn't. I never intended to go into sports. I didn't. It wasn't sort of a dream of mine or a goal. I loved football, um, but it was always my hobby and sort of passion. Um, And as you mentioned, I was a financial journalist. I started off covering Wall Street, um, investing, and then I transitioned to becoming an investigative reporter. And that's what I was doing when ESPN reached out to me in 2014. I was a on the investigative team at Bloomberg. Uh, so it was quite a surprise. They knew I was interested in sports because of my social media. And I had written a personal essay about football. But aside from that, um, my background as a journalist was entirely in covering business. So it, it was kind of a leap of faith for both ESPN and for me. When you first started your career as a journalist, were you interested in the financial side and the investigative side, or did you kind of just fall into that? Yeah, that also was something I didn't see when I was like (laughs) in college or growing up. You know, I, um, what I I didn't study journalism in college. I studied English, but I, you know, I wrote for the magazines and stuff, but I, I thought at the time when I was, I don't know, 19, that I would write about the arts, perhaps maybe the news, but I wasn't interested in business. I, I, (laughs) randomly i was placed through an internship program in college at a magazine called fortune small business which no longer exists anymore and that's how that's how i got into business and i really liked it you know but it was a lot of learning on the go learning about um how to read a 10k how to uh cover the markets and i sports were different because it wasn't quite as much learning on the go because i already knew a lot about football but um, it wasn't a goal of mine. It was something that I fell in love with through the process of doing the job. So interesting. So it seems like a lot of things kind of stumbled upon you or you stumbled upon them. Is that fair to say? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, especially early in my career, I would say, you know, as I've spent the last six or seven years working in sports, I've been a little bit more deliberate about my choices, but yeah, I, I um, I guess in some ways I've kind of fallen into these roles, but in other ways it's been the the work that I've done, I guess in other fields has prepared me uh, for my roles. Like, you know, covering business and covering sports are very different in some ways, but in other ways, I think the tools were pretty similar. You know, I worked a lot with data. I still do. I did a lot of reporting in business. And then when I started at ESPN, that's what I was doing. And um, you know, asking questions, structuring stories, learning how to dig. Those, those are all the same things. Yeah. I'm interested, Mina. You said that you always had a love and passion for football. Why? Where did it come from? You know, if you grew up not really envisioning yourself <laughs> ever participating in the sports broadcast world, where'd that passion come from? I, I This is a pretty common story, but it's from my dad. You know, I grew up watching football, baseball, basketball with him, all Seattle. My dad's from Seattle, but football is his favorite sport. So about transference, it was my favorite sport always. Um, and, you know, it was really interesting because, like, like I said, it was a hobby for me, but like a lot of people, it was a pretty all-encompassing hobby, just hours and hours just watching football. I mean, when I was a business journalist, spending a lot of time reading about football, um, being <laughs> – going on Seahawks internet forums uh love that. <laughs> and yeah that I hope no one can find but um it, so so when I got the opportunity to work for ESPN it, it was 
scary in some ways, right? Because I sort of yeah. built this credibility and knowledge and sort of institutional knowledge, I, I suppose, as a business journalist. But in other ways, it was something I couldn't turn down because there's so few opportunities in life you get to turn your passion into your job. Well, now that you are officially in the sports world, you have been for the past six years, do you find yourself thinking to yourself, this was my calling? This is what I was meant to do? Sometimes. I think, um, you know, I, I still really love it. And and I say that, like, still, because I think, you know, like, when you cover sports for a long time, I think your fandom kind of gets beaten out of you. But I'm still yeah. a fan. And not just of Seattle sports. I'm, like, a fan of football. Like, I still get so excited just when... I, I, I don't know. I just still have like a real love and joy for the game. And it still surprises me in ways that I didn't anticipate. Um, but I think a lot of people feel that way. I don't think there's anything unique about me in that regard. I feel very fortunate to have landed on this career. I think not just because, right, I, like I still love it. And it's, I'm still passionate about it. But um, because I think the sort of sports media itself is changing in ways that I feel excited to be a part of. A lot of talk about when you became a color commentator for the Rams during the preseason games, being a woman in that role, what were some of the things that you noticed when you were able to take that on? And even now being an analyst, being a female in those roles. Yeah. So, uh, you know, being an analyst on NFL live, um, it's actually, you know, it's something I've done for a while now at ESPN at Around the Horn, highly questionable, being an opinionator as opposed to hosting. Um, it's just a little bit more focused because it's only, we're only talking about football, which I love because on this show, we're able to kind of get granular about things where, you know, and really like if we're going to spend five minutes talking about um, Baker Mayfield and, you know, the use of, I don't know, design rollouts and in a way that we can't perhaps on some of our general shows get into the nitty gritty. And so I, I really, really love that. And that's not so different for me. Um, I feel very fortunate to work with other analysts on that show, Dan Orlovsky, uh, Marcus Spears, Ryan Clark, and then of course our tremendous host, Laura Rutledge, who have never made me feel like anything other than um, one of them. And mm -hmm. so I almost don't feel unique in that. Uh, but working with the Rams was, it, it was, a really unique experience not just because you know my gender and I suppose that it's sort of an unusual role but it, it was unusual for me it's something I hadn't done before I had to learn a lot on the fly kind of going back to what I said earlier about learning on the fly when I was covering business journalism that was absolutely terrifying and you know at times I struggled with it and um just because I had never done it before it's a totally different skill set from being an analyst on like a studio analyst which is something I've been doing for a few years now mm -hmm. um so that, that was really exciting, but it's also really scary. And again, I was lucky to work with uh, teammates and Andrew Siciliano and Nate Burleson who made it a lot easier, but it was a really, really unique experience. Do you enjoy the differences in, the anal in those two analysts and color commentator roles? I know you said one was a little bit scarier than the other, but do you appreciate that scariness in a way? Definitely, because I think um, you can't grow unless you take on roles that you're uncomfortable with in our industry, which is... I think really hard for women to do, frankly, because I feel like, mm. and I, and I don't, I don't purport to speak for everyone, but having talked to other women in our industry, um, I've found that they share a tendency I have, which is not wanting to take on roles or say yes to opportunities when I don't feel 110 percent prepared, right? Mm. Um, whereas some of the guys I work with are like, sure, I've never done this before, whatever, yeah. Mm. Uh, I do not feel that way. I have to be talked into just about everything. And so I think for me, um, saying yes to things when I'm not quite there yet and then trusting my ability to get there has been an important development in my career because that's honestly something I did not do a few years ago. Mina, I'm curious because from the outside looking in with other people, we view you as you know, a path carver. You're carving path for a lot of other women not only in, in football, but in sports in general, do you view yourself as that way and what you're doing as carving a path for other people, making a way? Uh, well, I've, the, a lot of the things I'm doing, certainly other people have done. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, for example, even doing the Rams, one of the games we were, um, they were playing then Oakland, now Las Vegas, and Beth Mowens was there and uh, who does, you know, color for them. And she just 
to me is someone I look up to like that. She yeah. is a true pioneer, right? Or getting to meet, um, like being around Doris Burke, who I've had opportunity to interview. Like I, those they are so brave and so talented. I admire them in a lot of ways. I just view myself as trying to, um, I guess, sustain a momentum or a wave, I suppose, that they already started in, in being a part of that. And I I just hope that, um, you know, you asked me kind of about getting into sports and I uh, say I sort of fell into it. It was a hobby. It's not something I saw myself doing. I just hope that as there are more of us in these roles, in a wide variety of roles on television, it becomes more normalized that other people... Um, it makes it easier for other people to sort of envision themselves doing these things earlier on than I did. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, from, you know, if it is any sense of encouragement from another female sports journalist on my end, have always looked up to you, so it's awesome to see you paving the way for others. But Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I want to have a little bit of fun before I let you go. Uh, first and foremost, you, you actually already mentioned it, but you talked about your social media presence and how – your fandom for sports kind of helped you get a foot in the door. And I even see, I see the way you interact with people on Twitter, especially with, uh, I think it's safe to say you might be queen of the gifs, gifs. I don't know how people <laughs> pronounce it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm yeah. a gif person. That's how I say GIF. it. Oh, are, are you a gif person? Are, yeah. <laughs> there's Hard one, G. there's one in particular. I wanted to play for you really quickly. This one really, oh this one really made me laugh the other day. This was, this was a blooper. I sound like a creep, honestly. I sound like I, I scoured no. your, you your sound prepared. social media. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm not a creep. But um, let's listen to this one really quickly. You posted this blooper from NFL Live. I got the Colts to win the division and this game. Love the DeForest Buckner <laughs> edition and peanut butter. Oh my God! It just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Is this I'm like so hungry. Is, is this the best uh, blooper that you have out there? Yeah. So people are confused because they're like, it's called NFL Live. It is live. So we, but after the yeah. show, sometimes we tape um like pre-recorded game picks. Yeah. So uh yeah, I was trying to talk about the Colts and ever since then, <laughs> so I called Philip Rivers Peanut Butter Rivers, and now I just he's Peanut Butter Rivers to me. That um, is so funny. <laughs> honestly, the other thing just to kind of explain that I had not eaten lunch. I think it was like two or uh -huh. something by then. So I was just starving. So I guess I really wanted peanut butter. It's, it's hilarious to me. Literally one of my... Thank you. I, I think I laughed at my desk probably four or five <laughs> minutes. But you, how has your social media presence helped you engage with your fan base and helped you to where you're at today? Because personally, I can't speak for everybody, but I think you have such a unique approach because you implement both humor, sense of humor, great analytics data your own sense of information yeah you know i i think sometimes for us uh, women i guess in sports there's a pressure to be perfect and it's sports are fun and they're yeah. silly and i think i hope that we can all kind of get to a point where we can show that we are able to not only make fun of ourselves but have fun with it and i think that's how i view social media um because it, it is it's a difficult place for everybody, honestly, right now, regardless mm -hmm. of who you are, your gender, your age, anything. So I've really tried to stress the fun side of it and to have a sense of humor on there and to try to block out people who don't view it that way, frankly, because otherwise kind of what are we doing? Has it, has it made your experience better, you would say, th with sports by having that view on social media? Totally. And I, yes, I, I think... For all of the trolls or whatever haters, there are mo most of the people on there do really just want to have fun with it, and yeah, I, uh, I I I really try to perpetuate that attitude and sometimes fail on my I certainly fail a lot, um, but yeah, I, I think it is also it allows kind of an expression of talking about sports and engaging it in a way that you know we can in podcast or we cannot in on television, and I you know, posting funny videos or engaging with fans, like that's, it is the only place where we can do those things. So I try to do yeah. that. It's also just a great way to connect with one another through humor. Cause like you said, sometimes people take it just too seri seriously. And at the end of the day, sports are fun and silly. Um, yeah. Mina, I'm going to wrap things up with you. And we talked about this right before we went 
on air, but you are a The Office fan. I also am a huge Office fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a quote. You're going to give me your best guess as to who said it. Are you up for the challenge? Okay. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm up for the challenge while fully prepared to fail. <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's the right <laughs> attitude. Plenty of room for failure here. All right. You ready? First one. Let's do it. Quote, and I feel God in this Chili's tonight. End quote. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, someone from the office. Gosh, it's been so long since I watched this show. I can give you a hint. Mm. It's um, Give me a hint. Season two. This is okay. one of the few females in the office. She had too much Pam? to drink that night. <laughs> yes. Pam it Pam? Beasley. It's Pam. <sighs> That's a, the, thank you. Thank you for that hint. Yes, absolutely. All right. Quote number two. I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. That's that's Michael. <laughs> that's actually like one of my one of my favorite quotes. I, I say that Someone, somebody used that recently. Someone an NFL player used that recently. I can't remember who it was. Did they tweet it or did they so say happy. it in an interview? No, they said it. I think it was an interview. I can't remember, but I was so happy. Thank you know, I you know, I'm not going to lie, I've said that a couple of times to people hoping they got it. But if you're not a fan of The Office, you're just going to think it's... I'm really confused, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Two more. This one. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Millions of families suffer every year. Mm, Dwight? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was Dwight. <laughs> All right. All right. Great. One more. One more. You're actually doing really good. Okay. Uh. All right. Let's go with this one. Sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. <laughs> uh, I feel like Michael. Is that your final by... answer? <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> no, go with your gut, Mina. You were right. It was Michael? Yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> it's all right. You got three it out of four. Like... That's me on, man, that quote captures me on, like, around the horn half the time. Does I'm it? That show. <laughs> I'm like, especially if I'm talking about, like, hockey. I'll be like, God, I feel like I just got to land the plane, Mina. Just land the plane. <laughs> so funny. It happens to all of us. Mina, thank you so much. I, I absolute blast to have you here on the New York Her podcast. Can't thank you enough. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me.